In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dear faithful, the biggest news story this past week by far is the news of the war in which Russia is engaging against the country of, of Ukraine. And when we look at the past and we think of all the wars that have been waged in the history of the world and the destruction that they have caused, we ourselves pray and hope that there be no wars in our own lifetime. And Holy Mother Church, likewise, does not want there to be wars. While we're not Quakers, we're not pacifists, yet Holy Mother Church strives to prevent the warrings of peoples. And one of the things she, she does to, to prevent wars is, is actually provide us with this holy season of Lent. <clears throat> People often see wars in terms of political conflict, of, of a certain struggle of, of power, of one nation against another nation. But they don't realize that, that all wars between nations are really a certain extension of a war that takes place on a smaller scale. And that is the war within each one of us. The war that's going on between our lower nature and our higher nature. The war between the spirit and the flesh. It's because this war is not regulated within each one of us that these bigger wars take place, break out between nations and so many lives are lost. This is something that St. James speaks to us about in his epistle. He says, Whence are wars and contentions among you? Are they not hence from your concupiscences, which war in your members? You covet and have not. You kill and envy and cannot obtain. You contend and war, and you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask wrongly, that you may consume it on your concupiscences. There is a war within each one of us that sets us against our own selves. On the one hand, you have our flesh, our passions that are pushing us towards evil, that act blindly, just lunge towards some sort of evil deed that they instinctively are attracted to. And because of our fallen human nature, we are pushed to. On the other hand, you have our soul, our higher nature, our intellect, and our will. And we as Catholics, we know what is right. We know the Ten Commandments. And our higher nature is saying, no, we must not do these things. And so you have a conflict that takes place in our own heart. In our success in waging this war and gaining control of our lower nature will ultimately determine our eternal feet, whether we will make it to heaven or we will not make it to heaven. And so th this is why the church gives us this special time of penance so that we can bring our flesh into subjection to the spirit, so we can wage this war with a, a greater intensity at one time of the year. The church knows that, that you can't be waging total war all the time. Of course, I hope that, that none of us uh, fly, fly the, the white flag of truce with our own flesh at any point in the year. But at the same time, it's important that for 40 days of the year at least, we are engaged in a much more intense war against our lower nature, against our passions. This is what the church asks us to do. It's like a certain tithe that we give to God. We take just 10% of the year, 40 days out of 365, and we engage ourselves to struggle against the flesh with a great intensity. We want to imitate the 40 days of fast that our, our Lord had, and which will be the gospel for next Sunday. And as I say, we want to gain the crown. We want to struggle in order to gain the self-mastery so that the regulation of ourself maybe will spill out into society and will help regulate those around us. Firstly, our own family. This Lenten fast, this very special time of the year uh, that the church provides us, has been practiced by Catholics ever since the beginning. It seems that the, the, the practice of Lent goes all the way back to apostolic times. So when you engage in Lent, you're doing something that has been done by Catholics for 2,000 years. 
You know that in, in medieval times, um, they used to have a, a peace of God at certain times when they would not conduct war. Um, and certain times when they were allowed to conduct war, it's like on Monday you can go ahead and have war, but then on Wednesday you need to stop. You can't, you can't do that anymore. Um, so too, the, the church is saying to us, we need to conduct a war during these 40 days. And because the church, Holy Mother Church, is, is a good mother, and she, she knows that she's going to be asking something of all her, her children, and, and not all of us are equal, not all of us are able to wage the combat with the same intensity, what she actually asks of us is quite mild. It's, it's quite reasonable. She, she sets the bar at a place she knows that everyone can reach. But first of all, she, she says, this is not for the elderly, and this is not for children. Uh, you, you have to be of a certain age before you start these, the, the fasting and abstaining. And secondly, um, after you reach a certain age, you're no longer obliged. But then the, the fasting and abstaining that's always been part of Catholic penitential practice is not extreme. It's, it's not like the Muslim Ramadan. You know what the Muslims do. They, they are commanded for a certain period of time in the year. It's similar to... The, it, it falls generally a similar time to Lent. But they cannot eat or drink anything during daylight hours. Whenever the sun is shining, they cannot eat or drink anything. And this is just so radical. It's, it's, it's very extreme. It's a lot to ask of every single practicing Muslim. And of course, when the sun goes down, they're allowed to do whatever they want. And they're often tempted to gorge themselves because they haven't eaten or drank anything during the day. What we do as Catholics is, is a lot more reasonable. We have these two practices, generally speaking, of, of fasting and abstaining. By, by abstaining, we do not eat a certain type of food. We do not eat meat. And there's, there's seven of those days for us, Ash Wednesday and the six, six Fridays of Lent. And then by fasting, we eat less food. We have one normal meal, which is just a regular meal, and then we have two meals that are called collations. It's like a fancy word for a snack, where you eat less. And then where you, the, the two collations that you have are not meant together to equal that one regular meal. So you have one regular meal in the day, and then you have two snacks, and of course you don't eat between meals. So these are the, the practices that the church sets for everyone. They're very reasonable, they're, they're very mild. But it's really important for us, especially as, as traditional Catholics, to not be content just with the, the standard that's set for everybody. The church has to be a good mother, but she also appeals to you to be more generous on your own. It's important for you to choose a voluntary penances on your own, having this in mind that I need to chastise my flesh and bring it under subjection. I need to unite myself with the passion and the suffering of our Lord. This is especially true today when the, when the, the laws of fast and abstinence are so relaxed uh, in comparison with, with times past. If you, if you get out the traditional calendar that so many of us use, you will see that they actually mark the traditional practice of fasting and abstaining. So like before the council, Catholics actually fasted and abstained every single day of Lent. So they just took a break on Sunday but the rest of the days, the 40 days of Lent, they actually fasted and abstained. Here in the United States, they would just do a partial abstinence, so they would eat meat one meal of the day, and then they would not have meat the other two meals. So, you know, there, there's, I hope we're not content with just doing two days of fasting, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and seven days of abstaining, but we're willing to do more than that. We especially must have this spirit of generosity because of the indulgence and luxury that exists today. You know that, that the world, the spirit of the world, is, is not, does not have this view of stopping the war that exists within your members, but rather the world is wanting to foster that war. It's wanting to increase the disturbances of your own passions and inflame them up in such a way that you find it very hard to keep them down. It's doing what it can to assist our bad side by, 
flooding our media with, with sensuality, by encouraging us to treat ourselves to our favorite foods and our favorite drinks all the time, and assisting us to entertain ourselves at all times and all places. This past week, I was, I was riding with some other priests. We were going to, to the district house, and there was just this dump truck in front of us, and there was, there was just like trash kind of just like spewing out of it, and it was like going all over the road, and we were hoping that the man was realizing what was, what was going. Perhaps he didn't have the top on properly or something. But that just reminded me of, of kind of the world that, that we live in. It's just this filth being spewed out all over the place um, in, in our midst, and, and it's, it's really for us to make sure that that filth does not infect us. And that we that really have a different spirit from the spirit of the world. That, that we recognize that we must not foster the war within us. We must not favor our bad side by exposing ourselves to these things, by doing things which we expect will inflame our passions and encourage our worst self to win out over our better self. Another thing that, that should inspire us to, to do voluntary penance during Lent is this fact that, that we, we realize, I hope we realize, that we are softer than Catholics of the past. We are weaker than Catholics of the past. It's true that, that our lives are busier, we're more stressed out, we have more things to do because of our technologies, but at the same time, we are weaker-willed, and we, we find uh, even little penances to be more difficult than Catholics of the past. So let us, let us try to reflect today um, about things that we can do during Lent, especially having this in mind, that I want to do something for our Lord, and I, I want to really put my flesh in subjection to my higher powers. I want to gain control of my own flesh. What kind of luxuries in food and drink can we give up during Lent? What kind of fasting and abstaining am I able to do beyond those two days of fasting and seven days of abstaining that I'm obliged to do? Can I do more than that? Maybe even go the 40 days. And particularly, I would like to add to this, what can I do by way of an entertainment fast? One of the things that, that is more, makes it more difficult for us to be virtuous today is the fact that we have such access to endless entertainment and a lot of it bad entertainment. These videos that are so easily accessible on YouTube or, or anywhere, the movies, endless movies, endless shows, episode after episode of shows. I see people on, on planes watching these shows. They just whip out their iPad and they're, they're watching, they're getting through all the episodes of their favorite shows. They're, these things are so accessible to us as Catholics and it's difficult for us to resist them. As a result, we necessarily are more worldly than Catholics of the past. They didn't have these sort of temptations. The world was, was more distant for them than it is for us. In a sense, we are called to be more virtuous. When you are tempted more, it takes more virtue to resist the temptation. So because the world has found more powerful ways to invade your life and to spew that filth everywhere in your living room, it takes more effort on your part to push it away. Would it be possible during this short time of 40 days, just 10% of the year, to completely give up your internet videos, just not to, to do any videos. Could you do something at the family level, perhaps you know, that the whole family does, replacing your movie time or your video time with reading or, or with, with playing a board game, just enjoying the time with your family? We, one thing we, we have to consider in, in regards to this, this war that we engage um, with the flesh is that we ourselves not be, must, must not be complicit in assisting our bad side. Sometimes we ourselves are the one who are helping our bad side. And it, it doesn't make any sense, especially when we're doing it over and over again. We see the results. For instance, we, we go watch a movie. It's got indecency in it. It's got profanity in it. It's got extreme violence in it. And we walk away 
and our passions are all stirred up. And we're, we're, we're finding this great attraction to sin. We're, we're finding um, this desire to practice some form of impurity. And we have a war on our hands. And we, it takes a great effort for us to suppress those passions, to get them back under control. We've all experienced this. And then what do we do? We're just like, hey, there's this movie over here, this program over here. We like forget the war that we've just engaged in and the fact that we ourselves have provoked the war and we started all over again. We go watch another one of these programs. Why would we want to be a party to this? Why would we want to inflict this war upon ourselves? We must have above all this, this charity towards our own person, keeping our peace of soul but not wanting to put ourselves in the occasions of sin. So my dear faithful, I, I invite you um, to correspond to this call that Holy Mother Church has been making to Catholics for the past 2,000 years to engage yourself in this combat and this period of penance during 40 days. And I propose for your uh, example one of the saints, there's so many beautiful stories from the lives of the saints in, in, on this topic. But I propose for your consideration the, the story of uh, Charles de Foucault, who was a, a Frenchman who was, he was raised as a uh, Catholic, but when he was a teenager and a young adult, he fell away from the faith. He lost his parents, then ended up losing his grandparents, and he received this big inheritance. And he himself confessed that after he lost the faith, he said his objective was to completely enjoy that which is pleasant to the mind and body. And so he lived a life of dissipation. He was a total slave to his senses. Apparently he was like eating caviar from a golden spoon. He was, he was like a womanizer. Um, he was engaged in just a life of total hedonism. He said of himself at this time, I mean, he's just writing to a friend. He says, I sleep long, I eat a lot, I think little. And it got to a point where, where his, his friends gave him a nickname. They started calling him Fats Foucault. You might have heard of Fats Domino. Well, this was Fats Foucault, you know, just because of the, the manner of life that, that he was living. So you would think that such a man would, would be completely conquered by the flesh and would not be able to free himself from that slavery. But he underwent a conversion. He had a, a very saintly cousin who invited him to come back to the church. He made a good confession. He received Holy Communion. And the transformation that was worked in him at that moment so touched him that he really burned with the desire to attach himself to our Lord Jesus Christ. And he understood that in order to do that, he had to be a spiritual man. He had to lead a spiritual life. He had to subject his flesh. And he, he, he waged a war with great intensity against his, his lower nature. He practiced extreme austerities. He ended up living in the desert in Morocco, a very austere life with the Tuaregs, the, the, the natives who were there, who, you know, they, they just lived a, a very, very basic life. And in the end, I mean, his, he was so malnourished that he lost his teeth at a young age. Um, he, he wasn't even 50 years old, and he, he had lost all his teeth. But while he had lost his teeth, and I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, not, I'm not encouraging you to have the same sort of diet, you know, with the, with the, th with the saints you, would, you admire, but kids don't try this at home. Um, but we can be generous. I'm just saying we can be generous. He had lost his teeth, but he had gained total mastery over his lower nature. We have these examples of the saints. Let us also be very generous in Lent to gain that victory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.